Today on Math Pickle, we're going to look at ways that you can help get mathematics education on the right track for elementary school. Whether you're a student, a parent, a teacher, a mathematician, or a researcher, you can make mathematics education better. Students, your job is to tinker and to problem solve. Whenever you grow up, you might not want to be a mathematician or an engineer, but you want to be a problem solver. That's what humans do best, and you're a human. I recommend that you go to Eric Friedman's Puzzle Palace. There you will find stacks of extremely tough and engaging puzzles to keep you occupied. You might also want to pick up a book by Ivan Moscovich. Ivan is just one of several authors, probably my favorite, um, who has a knack for producing very visually stimulating mathematical puzzles. If you're a parent, you have two roles. The first role is at home. How do you encourage problem solving at home? The easiest and funnest way is to have a culture of board gaming. Once a week, sit down and play a board game. Not all board games are created equal, so you'll have to do a little bit of research. I'll come out with a video on board games, with my recommendations, but you can also go to the best website to review board games, and that is boardgamegeek.com. The second role as a parent is as the engine, as the driving force for change. You probably want to be pretty respectful of your child's teachers, but that doesn't mean that you can't push for systemic change. What we want is problem solving at the fore, not memorizing, not speed mathematics, problem solving, tough problem solving. If you're an elementary school teacher, then just go to mathpickle.com. The site is really meant for you. I won't go into any more details here. If you're a mathematician and want to contribute to elementary school mathematics, I would encourage you to take the lead from the education faculty. You don't want to be going in with an idea, oh, statistics need to be taught in elementary school, or group theory needs to be taught in elementary school. What we really want in elementary school is problem solving, and we can support education faculties by providing them with quality problems, no matter which area of mathematics they want to expose their students. Lastly, if you're on the education faculty at some university, I encourage you to keep the communication channels open with the Department of Mathematics. Mathematicians aren't the easiest people to communicate with, but you'll find some subset that are truly engaging and will help you in coming up with quality, tough problems to support whatever curricular goals you set. If done. I'd also love to see randomized control trials becoming the gold standard in education faculties. We have spent too much time and too much effort producing qualitative work. There's nothing wrong with qualitative research, but it's difficult to synthesize, and if that's all we do, we end up, at the end of our lives, not really being able to contribute anything to the next generation. Instead, we just end up with a whole bunch of educational fads. The irony is that Math Pickle is subject to the same criticism as everybody else. At the moment, all I have to offer is my personal experience and conviction that tough problem solving deserves to be at the heart of a quality mathematics education. But this is insufficient. To see why you should not be contented with relying on qualitative research and personal conviction, let's look at an example from medicine. In 2000, there was strong consensus among medical doctors that osteoarthritis of the knee could be helped by procedures, arthroscopic lavage, and debridement. 350,000 of these procedures were performed annually in the United States, and that cost about $1 billion. In 2002, a paper came out, and it was a randomized controlled trial looking at the efficacy of these two procedures. 180 patients with osteoarthritic knees 
were randomly distributed among three groups. All patients were kept awake during the procedure, and they could watch the procedure on a video camera. For the placebo surgery group, just an incision was made on the leg, and they would actually be watching a video of someone else's surgery, although they didn't know it. For the two years following surgery, no difference could be found among the three groups, neither for function of the knee nor for pain. One billion dollars had been wasted annually on a needless surgical intervention. Doing randomized controlled trials in medicine and education is difficult. But if you're a researcher, that's what you do. And thanks to you, we will cull all of the fads from education. Gordon Hamilton signing off from Math Pickle.